Hello and welcome to Michael's Heartfelt AI, A Writer's Journey. Today we're looking at tarot cards and how they can assist with, along with AI giving interpretations in order to help get past writer's block or, or get to that next hard part of that story that you're just grappling with trying to figure out how it goes. So let's delve into creating. <laughs> So we are creating, uh, 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 we're at a point in my novel, I'm, I'm writing a romance novel and it's got shapeshifters in it, it's urban fantasy. I'm all the way at a chapter 43, um, two of my main characters who are shapeshifters just dive and fell out of an airplane, they change into birds, they, <laughs> they're they flying, but this is like a crux moment, it's the dark night of the soul moment uh, where two of my main characters are going to have a heart to heart with each other and um, I thought this might be a, a brilliant place for me to uh, show you uh, one use of AI that uses tarot cards of all things to uh, help get past that writer's block and we'll do, I'm going to try a live reading here with the AI interpreting to show you what I mean and to just give you an introduction I'm not talking about you know tarot in the sense of using it in some deep, you know, tell the future, or tap into some spiritual dimension thing. I'm using it as a creative uh, idea perspective generator. You know, you flip over some cards and it turns out that tarot cards, uh, they have a traditional meaning. Each one that you flip over, there's a whole bunch of them. There's different suits inside there. Uh, I'm new to it, so you know, expect me to mess up a whole bunch. You know, I don't know the meanings of all the cards, but ChatGPT does, so we'll tap into that. But you know, you flip over a card and say, "How might this apply to our situation?" And then it gives you a different idea from a perspective you might not have thought of. So, uh, not using it in a, a, a you know a, a deeply mystical way here, but using it in a creative, uh, mind-expanding, perspective-expanding way, and. Uh, I've just delved into them. If you're if you're new to tarot, um, yeah, there are some fears to get past. But uh, once you see, oh, it's just you know, it's some you know artistry that's gone into some cards that have a traditional meaning that people use to help reflect on their lives and and what's going on. So uh, we're going to try that here, and you can apply it to your novel and exactly uh, what you might be going through or what you're struggling with uh, in coming up with the next chapter. So here's, here's, here's this from, from my perspective. But uh, just to give you a, a, a peek at this, you know, uh, take a look at these, these cards here. I, I recently got my first tarot reading and um, it was from uh, a, a woman I found outside of a shop and these are the cards that uh, she drew for me. And, uh, you know, at the moment, I can't remember what these, these cards uh, actually um, uh, traditionally mean. But, you know, when you think about them in the context of your life, you know, she's like, don't tell me anything about your life. I'm not a future teller or anything. I'm just going to tell you what these cards mean. And then we can have a conversation about what's going on with you. And, you know, that was wonderful. And we did. And, and it was exciting. And she not only had cards, but I'll show you, she also had these um, these dice. And she said, pick however many you want, roll them on the table. And then, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you the meaning of those as well. And, you know, the dice are really just another version of the cards. You know, like uh, this is the Ace of Cups, I think. And uh, each of them represents a card. So when you throw them all out there, it's like, you know, throwing over a bunch of cards. And, you know, tarot is, you know, from my experience and what I'm using it as, it, it's just something that you can uh, de decide if it applies to you or not. Uh, or it, maybe it applies in one way or some other way, or maybe it doesn't apply or, you know, you, you know, the interpretation is in the eye of the beholder. So it really gives, it puts you in the driver's seat to decide what you can and, and what you don't want to take away from or what doesn't seem to make sense in the current context. And so, but it, so it's a great way 
if you're stuck thinking about something one specific way to bounce outside of that and go into much more uh oh i never thought of it from those perspectives so you know each card can represent a perspective so um let me show you what i've got here in front of me um I, uh, this is my very first, uh, card set. Uh, it's the Tarot of the Lantern Path. I went to, um, uh, to a anime convention, uh, in Miami and, um, and there was someone there, an artist, and these are her cards that she created. And I saw them, they have a brilliant kind of, uh, feminine energy to them. And you can see they have all the classic cards. They're they're not you know like you know make up your own card. They're they're the classic ones. Uh, and um, I'm gonna turn over a few. And you can turn over however many that you want in order to to get a reading or something. But uh, these are and they all come with a little booklet usually. And the little booklet will show you the meaning of each card and and what it means and. Uh, and, it, and usually there's a lot of customization here from the author that actually drew that particular card and what it means. And you can see, I don't know if you can see in this camera light, but there's the upright interpretation. Like if you flip it over and it's upside down, you get the reverse interpretation. You flip it right side up, you get the upright interpretation. Um, but there's these, but there's also the traditional ones. Now, ChatGPT may not know these, but it knows the traditional values, and that's that's what we're going to use today. Oh, and these cards are by Rudis to Buddhist at RudisToBuddhist.com. So uh, I encourage you to check out their artwork. I, you know, if you go into like a bookstore like Barnes and Noble or something like that, there's just tons and tons of artistry of all different kinds of decks to choose from. And these were my favorite ones of all time. I'm, I'm really enjoying them. And they're my first ones and my favorite ones. And I'm, I'm really enjoying them, especially for writing and, 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 and however else uh, for just entertaining and, and, and figuring out, you know, you know, complex things in life sometimes, uh, thinking about it from other perspectives. So, um, let's take a look. Uh, let's, let's try this. Um, one, there's different tarot spreads and here I'm just going to do a three card spread. And I, I like to do three cards. My favorite one, you could just do one card if you want, or you could do nine cards or however many cards you want that you want to like, you know, the dice that were on the table. She was like, throw as many of them as you want. And I just threw a whole bunch of them and she just told me the meaning of every single one. Um, and so, uh, in, in this case, I'm just going to simplify. I like to simplify and just pick up three. And so I pick three cards and I flip them over and let's, let's see what we get here. One's going to represent, uh, the past, what my characters have gone through up until this point in my novel, the queen of pentacles. Okay. And now the present, what they're currently going through in my novel, an upside down fool is this one. Wow. Okay. I have no idea what these cards mean. We're going to find out from chat GPT here. And then the two of cups. Okay. So these, these cards have traditional meanings and we're going to go over to um, chat GPT here and, and see what it says. Now, something else I'm going to show you here is, and I'm not going to dive deep dive into it here, but I'll, I'll probably deep dive into another video is I've uploaded my entire novel up, up until now, uh, all 43 chapters plus ancillary materials about how my magic system works, how my uh, shape shifting system works and just the logics and physics of my urban fantasy world. Uh, and all these documents up into this particular GPT, they're called. And now I can interact with it. And it's like a co-author or somebody who knows everything that's happened up till now. And I can ask questions and interact. And so I'm loading up in this context so that when I read this, they can pull from all the history of things that's gone by and the things that are currently going on and the things that might go on into the future. So I'll, I'll get into how to set that up and, and how to do that in another video, but that gives you kind of an overview um, of how, of, of why I've chosen this context. And Tracy and Regina Wolfcrafter, they're characters in my book. And um, 
And I'm thinking that they might be the, uh, the pen name that I use for my book when I write my uh, romance book and release it. So uh, that, that's just my current idea. But let's, let's talk to them and, and ask them about this uh, tarot card spread and see what they say. And uh, you may have seen it in one of my other videos. My technique is just a blast with uh, a ton of uh, text that tells everything I want to tell and then see what comes back. Um, so uh, I just, this is speech recognition. So uh, we're going to go on a journey and, and, and tell a whole bunch of stuff to see what, what will come out in this reading. Okay, so... I'm working on my next chapter and AJ and Adele and uh, they're separated because you know she's con she's confessed her love to AJ and and um, but Sandra has jumped with both of them off out of a plane they've crash landed they've shape shifted into birds and they flew as hard as they could to get to uh, the helicopter that they fell out of, but they just can't. And they land in this pond and they shape shift back into people and they have their first conversation. And so I'm really struggling to see what this conversation is gonna be like because Sandra has just gone in this incredible roller coaster, as you can see throughout the previous 43 chapters where she's gone through ups and downs. She's been so fragile, taken on so many roles. And to hear Adele conf confess her love to AJ just kind of broke her whole worldview that was so legalistic about um, how AJ should handle everything. So she, she's, she feels like, man, She's remembering the love that she once had with Samantha and she's she's kind of breaking in this moment. And I don't know if to make her really angry when these two finally talk it out because they've worked together for so long on the exposure task force and they've had their rifts and she's kind of blamed him for the death of Samantha. But uh, I don't know if she'll start off angry or if she'll just... Um, or she'll just jump straight to her, you know, moment where she transforms. I know for AJ, he's just gone through this incredible separation from all the people he cared about being captured and taken away in this helicopter. And so he's really going through blaming himself for losing them and not being able to protect them. I'm just trying to figure out what are they going to talk about? How is their dialogue going to unfold in this powerful moment? So in order to get some ideas and some perspectives, I've turned over three tarot cards. One represents the past, one represents their present, and one represents their future. And uh, the first card that's the past is the Queen of Pentangles or Pentacles. The second card is the Upside Down or Reversed Fool. And the third card representing the future is the Two of Cups. And so I'm, I'm wondering what would Tarot say with the interpretation of these cards uh, might be in store for my characters in this ne next chapter. I mean, trying to think of ideas of how they're going to interact in this key moment that's like a turning point for my whole novel. And so... Uh, can you can you give me what the these cards might suggest as a, a different way to think about how I've been thinking about it so far and uh, l let me know what you think all right there's a over three minutes of talking I did to give context to the language model to be able to talk to me and and uh, talk with, and respond intelligently with all the context I can I can muster to fit in because the more context the better so I'm gonna select all this and I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it over so that they can respond and now remember they have access to my whole book up till now so I'm gonna paste that in and you know one problem that I have is Adele doesn't get spelled right the way it speech wrecks, so sometimes I 
I fixed that in a, in a few places, but mostly the speech rec does really well. So let's let's see send it turning and see what it says. So let's zoom in here. And here is some help for my next part of my novel where I'm thinking about what to write next. Um, Michael, this is such a pivotal moment in your story and it's fantastic you're using tarot to explore deeper layers for Adele, AJ, and Sandra. Let's dive into what the cards might be whispering to us. Okay, I'm really looking forward to this, but let me just say as a side note, um, I did try this once before with uh, Claude, and it's it's not just me. Um, uh, Claude kind of rebuked me a little bit and said, "Hey, you know, you might not want to use the tarot cards, you know, and you might want to choose some other ways to get help with this." Uh, I can't remember the exact words, but I just felt like Ugh, I felt terrible after talking to it. But and and some other people have felt like. Claude has been more uh, judgmental, but um, I, I, that's all I'll say. You know, these things are evolving and they're always changing and people are trying to pull more and more bias out of these language models all the time. But, you know, that might not be the end of the story for Claude. But here I've, I've typically had a good experience with, uh, with tarot. So let's dive into what, what what's going to happen with my main characters in this. Okay, so I drew... For the past, I drew the Queen of pen, pen, Pentacles. I guess it's Pentacle, Pentacles. I guess it's Pentacles. Okay, you see, I'm not. I'm not so. I mean, you can see right here, she's holding a a, a pentagram pentacle thing. So, okay, here we go. And, and you know, I'll just add while I'm thinking about it. Some people say when you use tarot cards, don't even go by any book. Don't even go by any traditional thing. Just look at the picture and notice it's a bright sunny morning. They seem like despondent on their face. They're contemplative. They're and notice things about it and come up with your own interpretation. Perfectly valid. You know, people use them that way. And I, I had a friend, she said uh, when she was new to, to tarot cards, her friend took her the instruction book away and said, nope, just use it for, just based on your own in, intuition for a week. And then if you still want the book back, then I'll give it to you. <laughs> and you know, it's a valid way to use them. Anyway, here we go. Interpretation for the past Queen of Pen Pentacles. Interpretation. The Queen of Pentacles is a nurturer, grounded and abundant. She's about caring, practicality, and stability. So application to Sandra. This card could symbolize her past stability her grounding force, perhaps Samantha, and her nurturing nature. It might reflect her longing for that. It might reflect her longing for that lost security and love, highlighting her depth beyond her legalistic worldview. Yeah, so I'm thinking, hey, that could be a key thing that that Sandra is thinking about is that deep loss of love that she had with Samantha. That could be top of mind for her. That could be what's tearing her apart because she normally uses, I don't want to think about it strategies and avoid it strategies. But here, after seeing that love confession, it's staring her in the face. That can be, you know, as I write that character and that dialogue, that can be the forefront of her mind. I can totally see that. The present, reversed fool. Okay, the interpretation, the fool in reverse speaks of recklessness, naiv naiv naivety, or a, a disregard for consequences. It's a step back from the brink of a new journey due to fear or uncertainty. So the application for Sandra. Sandra's current state could be one of hesitation and fear, especially after hearing Adele's confession. This could be her moment of reckoning, questioning her beliefs and choices she's made. For AJ, it might represent his self-blame and feeling lost in the chaos. Okay, well, you know, that is kind of what I, you know, I gave in. I don't know if that really adds to what I was already thinking. It's kind of in the same vein, 
you know, she hears the confession and maybe she, maybe there is some hesitation. I mean, that whole idea that she just comes out with, you know, fists ready to fight and, uh, you know, maybe that could be a hesitative type of way that she does that. <laughs> okay, well... At least it's getting me thinking about it and thinking in the in the space I need to think about to write the chapter. Okay, the future, the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is all about connection, mutual respect, and harmony in relationships. It's a positive omen for partnerships and reconciliation. Application to Sandra and AJ. This card suggests a potential for reconciliation, understanding, understanding or a deepening of their bond. They might find common ground or at least a mutual respect arising from their shared struggles. See, so, yes, that is, that's what I was thinking for these characters, that they're both having their dark night of the soul simultaneously, but they're there together uh, with each other for it. And they may team up forces here enough I mean, maybe not completely friends and all that, but enough that they can get along and seek out to, you know, save all the captured people. So here's some advice on crafting the dialogue. Starting point, considering Sandra's emotional roller coaster and AJ's guilt, their conversation could start with a mix of confusion, anger, and vulnerability, progression. Let them express their raw emotions. Sandra's anger and heartbreak AJ's guilt and frustration, this catharsis is crucial for their growth. That's a good point to not skip over that. <clears throat> Turning point. Gradually, as they converse, they can begin to see each other's perspectives. Understanding blooms. Maybe even an awkward or unexpected moment of humor or shared memory to ease the tension. Okay. The awkward moment that kind of helps them transition. Okay. Resolution with the Two of Cups energy. End with a sense of newfound respect or an unspoken agreement to support each other. It doesn't have to be a complete resolution, but a step towards mutual understanding. So, and because I asked for custom instructions because I have an ADD, and it's, it's hard on me reading a tons of text. It often gives me the summary or TLDR for the P Queen of Pentangles, Sandra's longing for stability and love. For the present, reverse fool, there is fear, hesitation, and chaos. Future of cups, potential for understanding and connection. And dialogue flow, start with raw emotions, move through understanding, and end with the steps towards reconciliation. Wow, that's helping me. I mean, that's a lot like what I was thinking anyways. But it's, it's, it's giving me more thoughts in that space, getting me more and more ready to write this scene. Michael, this scene is ripe for emotional depth and character development. Let the tarot guide the flow of your character's emotions and their journey towards understanding and possible healing. Remember, the magic lies in the journey, not just the destination. <laughs> and you know, <clears throat> it's writing this scene it's not that it just has to get read, done and everything. I need to write it so that I can process it and it can do the therapy on me as I write it. It is about the journey and not just the destination of getting the scene done. So, you know, here I've kind of demoed a way to, uh, to, to look at using tarot and, and bring in the, the um, chat GPT to read the cards, you know, I flipped over these particular cards, but hey, what it, it seemed like it jived with what I was thinking. If I just put these away and flipped over three new ones, you know, would I get uh, would I get the same thing again? You know, uh, or would I see other things? I could just keep going here for a bit and and you know stay in this important scene in my mind's eye until it's so ripe to and, and ready to put down on the page. So uh, that has been uh, my AI uh, uh, journey uh, exploration with using tarot. 
Uh, you can use other things or uh, any other text as long as you just throw all the context it needs in order to make all the correlations and help you think in new and creative ways about your work. So uh, I want to encourage you in your writing to go forth and uh, experience joy in the journey as you write awesome, wonderful things and get them down onto the page. Uh, so thanks for joining me on this little trip through tarot and I'll see you next time. Bye.